I talk is about inflation testing. I'm Hernan, Hernan Wilkinson. Uh, I work for the University of Buenos Aires and also I study a new company called Tempines about consulting, small talk and other things. And uh, the work I'm going to present is uh, a work that Nicolas Chizo and Gabriel Luz and I are doing as part of the, their uh, master thesis. Yes, I'm advice of the master thesis they do. So, let's go right to the answer to the question. What is mutation testing? Mutation testing is a technique to verify the quality of the test. Okay? So, if you think that you have tests to verify the quality of the code, of the source code, the idea of mutation testing is to do something to verify the quality of your test. Yes? And doing so, sometimes, you get better quality in the source code. Okay? It's not that you write tests to verify the, the source code, but there is a process that allows you to check how good your tests are. <clears throat> how does it work? Well, the first step, you have to create a mutant. So the idea is that you have the source code, you have some mutant operator, that I'm going to talk a little bit more, and after a, a process called mutation, whatever, you create the mutant. Okay? <clears throat> For example, let's say we have this code. It's, it's not the right implementation of an equal, but it's just for example. A debit card equals another debit card. Okay, the idea is to see if they're equal, so that's the code to check that. And a mutation of ratio would, would change the and for an O, for example. Okay, and that new code is a mutant. Okay, or this is another one. We have a net pay is a total pay minus total refund. You can, uh, you know, uh, execute an operation, uh, a mutation operation, and change the minus code with a plus, and you get this new code. Okay? So the new code is what we call the mutant. So why? Why do we do this? I mean, how does it help to verify the quality of our test? Well, the idea is the second step when we try to kill the mutant, okay? The idea is that we have the mutant, and we have to try to kill, kill all the mutants we generate, yes? So how do we do that? We have the test suite with all the test cases, and we have somebody that is going to try to kill the mutant running all those test cases, yes? So it's going to take the test cases, and it's going to run all the test cases with the mutant installed, and if the mutant survives, it means that all the tests run. If all the tests you have run, that means that the mutant survive. If there is one test that fails or gives you an error, that means that the mutant died. And the meaning of that is, if the mutant survives, it means that you are not testing the case that the mutation, that the, the, muta the, the, the mutant code is, you know, uh, generated. Okay. If the mutant died, that means that uh, the case generated by the mutant is being tested in your test. Yes, so that's the whole idea. Yeah. You assume that the mutant's behavior will be different from the original behavior. Well, that's not always the same. That's not always the case. There, there are some tricks about how to do the, the, the mutation. And Sometimes you have mutants that are semantically equal to the source code between them, so that's that, 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 you know, something that you have to do some research on that to, to make it run faster, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Hello? Yes? Uh, do you uh, apply the mutant, uh, several mutants at the same time and then run the test? Or? No, no, no. Every time, thank you. Yeah, that's a good question. You run all the tests per mutant. You just create a mutant, run all the tests. Create another mutant, run all the tests. Okay, just small changes to your code, and then you have to run all the tests. So you can start to realize that it's brute force technique. Okay. Okay. For example, let's see this uh, code, the, 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 the previous one that, that I showed you. Uh, you you apply the uh, operator that changes the and with the or. If you only have this test case, that is the usual test case, the test case that most junior programmers write, that's the test case that verifies the positive 
I don't know why I have to do it twice. That's something. Okay, and this is the fun part. Uh, before running all the tests, before running the, the, the verification uh, to kill the mutant, the tool runs all the tests to be sure that none of them is failing. Because if one of them were failing, you would kill all the mutants. Yes? So what happened now is that I created the test and it's telling me your tests have errors or failures. Please correct them before trying to kill the mutant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say well, why it's failing. <clears throat> but this is, I, I have something I did for Faro to make TDD faster, so every time there's an error, you just, the debugger appears, and well, this is easy stuff. And the problem is here, I did it in purpose, but this is a common error, I mean, instead of putting an AND, I put an ON. Okay? So the solution is easy, just do an AND. But the purpose of this example is to show you how an easy mistake could go through your code, your testing system, or your, your test cases, without noticing that, because you didn't do all the test cases that you had to. Yes? And because of that, I, I ran the test and testing, it told me, it told me, oh, there is a case you're not testing, I added the new case, and now I found back in the source code. Yeah? Is, is that clear? Is it clear? Okay. Cool. So now the test, is running. I'm going to try to kill Newton. Let's see if I can. Wait. No. Wait a minute. I'm going to run again. <coughs> okay. Well, I don't know why that happened to me yesterday. You, you saw I, I, I changed the and, the or, but for some reason I didn't save it. So let me do it again. Okay, cool. So now we created 12 mutants instead of 10. 11 of them were killed, just one survived. Yes? So now we do the same process again. Let's see, uh, this, uh, this mutant is one that is, you know, is saying that it's missing test case where type equal object type is false. Yeah, the other case. Yes? have to test the old case also. So, the idea is to write that test. I have it here. It's a test that creates a debit card for Visa and a debit card for Master with the same number. That's done. I mean, that's, that can happen. It's not true. But, you know, it's just an example. And with that test, if we run, again, the, the mutation, we can see now that we are okay. Okay? All of the mutants were killed. <clears throat> so we can say we are pretty, pretty sure that the code is well covered with the test cases. Any questions so far? Cool. Yes. Uh, could you <coughs> uh, show some or give us some idea of the uh, kind of uh, mutations you yeah. Yeah, I'm going to show that now. Uh, so let me tell you first what, how, it, how it works. Yeah, it's, like I said, we run all the tests before doing the analysis. Then for each method and for each operator, mutant operator, <coughs> we modify the AST, compiles the mutated code, install that in the measure dictionary, run the test. Okay? We have a bunch of I think that, that was your question. We have a bunch of operators. Yeah, there is a lot of operators. For Boolean messages, for example, yeah, you change, uh, remove an all, or change the and with an and or an or, or, uh, you know, you change an or saying the first condition is false, or you change the second of the condition of the or with false. You know, all those things. Magnitude messages, you change equal with not equal, less with uh, greater than or whatever. <coughs> Collection messages, for example, what happens if instead of, uh, if you do a reject that always returns true, or a reject that always returns false? <coughs> um, 
other messages, change them, class with minus, times with divide with. Flow control messages, you know, if you, you can change if true and if, if false, uh, or and if false with an if true, or remove, for example, an exception handler to see if you are testing that you are handling exceptions. That's very important. It's not usually tested. <clears throat> so, that's the basic idea. There are more operators. Uh, the problem with the operators is that the more you have, the more time it takes you to verify the coverage or the, the quality of your test. So, uh, we, we are still working on which operators are the best ones. Okay, because not all the not all the operators give you good advices. Sometimes they give you false positives and you know uh, suggestions. <clears throat> uh, so, but these are most of the ones that we are using right now. And, and you know those operators are not just our idea. Mutation testing is, is old, as we're going to see. Mutation testing is uh, really old. It's like a small talk. It first started the idea in 1971, and then it became accepted or used in 1978. So the question is why it's not widely used? Well, it's not widely used because testing is not widely used. <laughs> I mean, you, you start thinking about this when you are doing testing. If you're not doing testing, you don't even have this problem. <clears throat> Another problem is, is that it's not easy to do it if you don't have the right tools or the right process, processes it, as a software development uh, company or whatever. So test driven development plays an important role here, yes? Because now TDD is used, it, it has more people working doing TDD as me, I like TDD. And for me it's very important. After a certain time when I'm feeling that I'm doing fine with the code, to run mutation testing to see if there is something else I should test. And it's also a technical problem. Okay, like, like I said, it's a brute force technique. Hmm? If you think about this, n as the number of tests, m as the number of mutants, the order of this algorithm is n times n. Okay? It's a lot. So, for example, uh, Aconcagua is a package within like five years ago to test, uh, to verify measures. Yes, it has 666 test cases. That's true, it's not <laughs> but it didn't do that on purpose. And uh, if we think about running that basic algorithm with Java or C++, you know, with those environments that are statically typed that you have to compile, link, and then run the system per mutant, yeah. Let's say that each of the uh, mutants uh, takes 10 seconds to generate the mutant, compile, link, and run all the tests. That would give us like 1,800 hours to run all these tests with 1,000 mutants. Okay, that's scary. Yeah, it doesn't work. So the the, the guys on the uh, on that work with this mutation testing thing with uh, C++ and Java and all those languages. They, you know, they're trying to make it work faster, so they do th things like this. You know, they, okay, let's create all the mutants at once. Let's start the system just once, so we don't have to compile per mutant, we don't have to link per mutant, we don't have to start the system per mutant, let's do it once. And they have a global variable and say, okay, I'm trying now mutant number 12, and if you try mutant number 12, zoot, mouth, uh, you know, it's going to run this code, the one that changes an or, an and, an or. If they're running mutant number 13, it's going to change, it's going to, you know, run this code that changes the and with an and. Yeah? Those are techniques that they use to make it run faster, yeah? I know there's somebody who say link, reveal, restart. Because, I mean, how are you going to, for example, in Java, oh. if you, no, no, I'm talking about, this is, this is the problem with Java and C++, okay? It takes a long time to use mutation testing because of the environment, okay? So, 
making that change that I just showed, I just want to show that you know, there is a problem, a performance issue here. Hmm? So making that small change with all the mutants at the same time, it might go to 80 minutes. And this is just, uh, they are not real numbers. I don't care what doesn't work in Java or anything. There's just, you know, if it takes two minutes to run everything, it's going to take 80 minutes to run all the uh, mutants. Okay, that's carry two. So, with Muto, we did some optimizations to make this work. I mean, we are in a small tool and not wait too much. <laughs> so, we want immediate feedback, and we have, therefore, four ways of running. Uh, because we're still testing how it works. <clears throat> And the four strategies are the basic one, you take all your code and run all the test cases against your code. Yeah? That's the basic algorithm. The second one is, okay, let's mutate all the code that you want to mutate, but run only the tests that cover that code. So for example, if you change the method, you don't have to run the 663 test to verify if you're killing that mutant, it can run just one, the one that is testing that method. How do you do that? What? How do you do that? Oh, because... Okay, I'm, I'm going to show you. Okay. The, the, the third one is uh, mutate only the cover method, run all the tests. And the fourth one, that's the most interesting one, is mutate only the methods that are being covered by your test and run only the test that cover those methods. How we do that? We run the cover test before doing the, uh, the mutation testing. So this one, you know, is before uh, building the mutant, it runs the test, do a cover test, takes time, takes a lot of things, you know, information from running the test, and then it only runs what it needs to do. And the results are the same. Only there is one difference. With, between the first one and the, and the last one. Well, of course it's time, yeah, the last one is faster, sometimes it's like, I don't know, three times faster, four times faster. <clears throat> but the first one generates more mutants, because it's covering all the methods, it's going through all the methods. So if you don't have good coverage on your test, it's going to generate more mutants than the one that only mutates the code that is being covered by the test. Okay? <clears throat> so it's, there is a relationship between coverage and mutation testing. Yeah, I'm going to talk about coverage. Yeah. So we have these four strategies. I, I'm going to leave this for the presentation. So, for example, in Aconcagua, running all the tests, all the mutants, and all the tests to take like one minute, six seconds, six seconds, six seconds. And the fourth strategy takes 36 seconds, so half the time. And it's good because you can see that 83 mutants survive. And that's an interesting, I'm not going to show you yet, uh, you know, a, a case where you're testing. So you got the same results with the first method and the last method? No, it's not the same results. Let me show you that. Because this is, okay, this is uh, Aconcagua with the first method. We have 700, 704 mutants. And for the same package running the last method, we have 634 mutants. But why? The problem is that we have code that we are not covering, yes? We see the progress is only 98%. Yes? Uh, is it also the case that you see that the mutants change the coverage of the code? The mutation could send you down a branch you would not otherwise execute. Well, <clears throat> if a mutant changes, remember that we run all the tests per mutant. Yeah. So, um, I didn't quite understand your question. The 
You've got coverage yes. of the original. That's right. You know which methods are coming oh, okay. the original. That's yeah, that's true. The mutant that's true. may have a different coverage pattern. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, you know, that's, uh, I mean, that's not a problem because you're not going to have more tests because you make a mutation on your source code. The tests are going to be the same. Yes, but their coverage may not be. The, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. But, you know, it's a good... Um, yeah, yeah, it's an approximation. <clears throat> it's not a, uh, an exact technique. Okay? Actually, if you accumulate the coverage yes. of the mutants, you're going to have more coverage due to the mutants, probably. Could be. I don't know. I'm not sure. So, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> So, for example, here in Aconcagua we have 88%, and if you look at the, uh, no, this one, I think it's this one, no, yeah. There is a case we are not testing, and it's good that we have this. It's a very simple case, you know, between and not inclusive, it's a, you know, it uses a less than or equal, and we are not testing the case where we have just a less than, yes. So, let's see. <clears throat> Let's see the test. <clears throat> well, it's, it's true, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to show you all the code, but the idea is that I have to put a one here <clears throat> to cover that case. Okay? And we, <clears throat> the current test only is testing with zero and two, zero and one, but it's not changing the previous, you know, the uh, front of the um, the front of the internal. So now let's try to kill the mutant. Yeah, so we, we made that change and now the mutant is there. We killed it. Okay? <coughs> cool. Have more statistics here about the difference between running the uh, basic algorithm and the uh, one that does. Uh, on the coverage, um, it always almost wins back here with a green description. Uh, no, sorry, here with a pure more common. Uh, I don't remember why, but there is a reason. Uh, I think it's because the tests <coughs> are, uh, take a lot of time. So the, to, to do the coverage, you know, is more time because we have to. Pre, you know, before running the analysis, you have to run all the tests to, to make the coverage, and I think that's the reason. But mainly it's faster. Most of the cases, running that way is faster than running the, the basic algorithm. We have also some optimizations. I, I, I said that sometimes you have to kill the mutants. Uh, you know, sometimes when you mutate a code, you could get in a cycle and never get out of there, so sometimes you have to kill the killer, terminate it, yes, and the common tools, what they do is they, um, they have a fixed amount of time, like 5 seconds or 10, ten seconds, and if uh, the test doesn't end in 10 seconds, they will kill it. We do different things, when, when we do the coverage, we also take the time that each test takes, and if when running the analysis, the test takes more than 3 times the original test, we are pretty sure it's taking too much and we kill it. Okay? <coughs> so that, that helps a lot to run you know, the system faster or the analysis faster. <coughs> so I'd like to really find Mutalk as a mutation testing tool that uses meta facility stuff to run faster and provide immediate feedback. Yeah, it's not just a tool that you use like current tools in a after work fashion or a static type fashion. The idea is that it helps you to, you know, dynamically also improve your test. <clears throat> and people that are not used to small talk see this and wow, wow, how easy. <laughs> so we have some work in progress. Thesis is not finished yet. Uh, one of the things that we want to do is we want to categorize the operators on how useful they are. Okay? Not all the operators give good uh, or detect good errors. We want to improve a little bit the runner to have a filter.
based on that categorization of the operators, we will end up have you know, the option to cancel the mutation because if you run in mutation testing on beer or season, it takes like five minutes. Yes? And sometimes you want to you know, cancel, but we don't have that option yet. We have some ideas to do in the future. Like, for example, uh, you know, I, I told you that uh, some operators generate the same logic semantically. For example, this one is, uh, we have a code where an if true is changed with an if fault. And it's going to do the same thing as if we change the equals with a different. It's the same behavior. But that's not easy to detect. You know, those who do computer science don't that know that this is not a computer problem, yes? But maybe, maybe we having more intelligence mutants looking at the context and not only the method or the message sense that they have to change, we may have some improvement there. Uh, we want to also suggest better ways to write the case that you are not testing. Okay? We have that description that is pretty good, but we would like to press a button and have almost the code that you have to write. It's not impossible because you already have tests, so we have to think about taking the current test and do something to help you write the, the new code. <coughs> And of course, it's a small talk, so we would like to test Newton with Newton. <laughs> we'll do it someday. Um, okay, and now before, before we, we have the conclusions and the questions, I, I'd like to say maybe some of you were wondering why, okay, why does it work? Okay, I showed you that, that it works, but that's just an example. We have to be sure that it works forever or for all the cases. And well, the, somebody demonstrated in 1995 that complex faults are coupled, or coupled to simple faults in such a way that the test data set that it takes all simple faults in a program will detect most complex faults. Okay? So that means that complex faults have a root in simple faults. Yes? So, in practice, if the software contains a fault, there will usually be a set of mutants that can only be killed by a test case that also detects that fault. Okay? And with those two things, you are pretty sure that this is a technique that helps you to you know, improve the quality of your test and find faults that you didn't see, errors that you didn't see writing the test or doing the development. There's also, uh, okay, uh, this is a statistic about some packages. Uh, for example, this is a Konkawa, the one that I showed you. Uh, these are uh, mutants, number of mutants. Um, the white is terminated, the red are alive mutants, and the blue, or, yeah, blue is uh, killed mutants. So you can see most all the packages, almost all the packages, have cases that they are not testing. <clears throat> um, how does it compare to coverage? Well, mutation testing does not replace coverage. Okay? It's not a replacement for coverage. But it gives you better insight than coverage. Yes? Why doesn't why does it replace coverage? Because sometimes there are methods that you cannot mutate because there's nothing to mutate. Okay? So if you are not going to mutate method that you are not on it and you do not cover those methods, you never know if that code is correct. So first you have to do coverage to be sure how good or how covered is your code, and then you can do mutation testing as a second uh, step. Or do mutation testing first, but keep in mind it doesn't replace coverage. <coughs> Uh, and in some way it is better than coverage because sometimes coverage doesn't, uh, not sometimes, I mean, coverage doesn't give you an idea when you are not testing a case. They just tell you, uh, you send this message or you didn't send it, you run this method and you didn't run it. 
Here, the testing testing tells you, okay, you run this method, you execute this method, but you didn't test that part of that method. You didn't test this case. Okay? So it's better than that. So, yeah, I think that's all from test and testing. So, questions? Yeah, my, 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 my girls like that. I have to put it because of that. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. 
discuss that the test only show you what you are testing. So. Yeah, of course, of course. Testing is better than the hard testing. <laughs> okay. Okay, well thank you. Thank you.